Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Steven, and if you're new to home brewing, you're in the right place. Hit the like button if you want to learn more about all the steps involved in home brewing, some tips and tricks. I have been home brewing on and off for about three decades, and I finally decided to sit down and put together some videos and share my brewing days and, and what I do. So today's video is going to cover grain and we'll talk about whether you should mill your own grain, whether you should go to a homebrew store and have them mill your grain or buy your grain there, or should you buy your grain online? Uh, or should you buy your grain already milled? A lot of kits that you buy uh, online that have everything you need all in one kit already have the grain milled. Is that good? Is that a problem? Uh, and let's talk about how grain turns into beer. And in that process, let's also talk about what malt is or what malting means so we can clear that up. So this is step two, usually, in your brewing process. The first step before you get to the grain is to build a recipe. So if you want to see a video on that, look up here and I'll link to a video I did on building this particular recipe that will use this grain. And when I'm all done, I will post a video from beginning to end on that entire brewing day process. So, let's roll the intro. Okay, so before we get started and start talking about grain, uh, I will put, as always, uh, links to everything, all the grain, all the equipment I use, everything will be down in the description. Uh, we won't be putting the recipe in the description yet because that's going to be coming in a future video. So for today, just for your edification, I will go ahead and put what I've got on the table here and links to it. Keep in mind that I do use affiliate links. Uh, it just means that I get a very teeny tiny kickback if you happen to buy something that's from one of my links. It doesn't cost you any more. It's the same price as if you were to search for it and buy it yourself. The only difference is if you do it through my link, I get a tiny little portion back. And it always helps the channel. So, let's get into this grain. So to start with, almost every recipe you're going to make is going to have a base grain. So base grain simply means the majority or the highest percentage grain in that recipe is going to be of one type. And it's usually a larger amount, so what I do and what you might want to do if you've been brewing for a while and, and you might want to consider it is buy a really large bag of base grain. I'll go ahead and edit in a picture that I took of the base grain that I bought. You can go to any homebrew store and buy a 55 pound bag of two row. Two row is almost always the type of base grain that any recipe is going to use. Don't worry about the brand, um, unless you have a particular brand that you're partial to. Shouldn't really matter. Just uh, go and I personally just get whatever's local and inexpensive because you're going to use a lot of it. In this case, this is an example of what I have. Uh, I took my 55 pound bag and I split it up into smaller bags and I wrote on them, for example, this says two pounds of Great Western Two Row, okay? And I highly recommend that you get a food saver. 
What's really nice is that you can use it for so many things around the house. So you, what I do is, of course, as you can see, I put the grain into food saver bags and I suck out all the air. And then it's pretty much, you know, airtight and good for a very long time. I also use it for my hops. When you buy hops, you usually are going to end up having to buy more than you actually need for your recipe. So you can put the excess in a food saver bag, take out the air, and then throw it in the freezer. And honestly, I mean, I've seen hops that are just as good two years later that are stored that way as they were the day that they arrived. So you can, of course, use it for your everyday food, too. It's really good for vegetables. A little trick, though, if you do have something that, that's soft, it helps to freeze it first, then put it in the food saver bag and suck the air out. Uh, just a little tip. So if you're new to home brewing, you really don't need to buy a 55-pound bag of this stuff. You can go to your homebrew store and get just the amount you need for your recipe. They'll have bulk bins of this stuff. So you just take what you need and you can mill it. Uh, every homebrew store is going to have a bulk section of grain and they're gonna have a mill right there with the bulk grain that you can use to uh, mill your grain. And then you can mill all of the grain you need for your recipe and put it all into one big bag because you're all gonna be using all of it at once anyway. Uh, so it's going to be all milled and mixed and ready to go for you. Uh, if you've been brewing for a while and you're looking for ways to save money and also looking for ways to save a little time, like I say, buy the two row, the big bag of two row. I probably buy a bag every, oh, I don't know, three, four months, um, give or take. So it saves me quite a bit of money. Plus, I don't have to run to the store and get a bunch of base grain every time I want to make beer. I've already got a whole bunch of it stored away. I put it in these food savers, then I stick those in a big tub in the, in the closet, and that's, that's where I store it. So the next type of grain we want to talk about is specialty grain. So you have your base grain, and then you have any kinds of specialty grains. That's going to be smaller portions than what your main, what we call base grain would be. So you might use a caramel malt or a chocolate malt or you know some sort of pale malt. There's lots and lots of grains. The specialty grains just add a lot more nuanced flavors and stuff to your beer. It's gonna be a much smaller quantity. So you can also get those at a homebrew store and have it milled there. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you do a lot of brewing, like myself, you might want to just look into ordering online. If you can think ahead and you know what you're going to need, order it ahead of time. So a lot of these bags that I have in front of me here are specialty grains that I ordered for this upcoming beer that I'm going to make. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. You're going to have to wait until I make that video. So this is uh, you know, a great western uh, white wheat. Um, I've got, uh, as I had just mentioned, I've got some caramel here. Actually, this is from a previous batch of brewing that I just took and put in a food saver bag. Um, you know, I've got other, I've got some six row, um, it'll all be in the description. Uh, but in addition to the grains, I also have some other things. So you don't always just put grain in your mash build for your beer. You can put other things. Sometimes you will put oatmeal. In this case, my beer is going to use uh, flaked barley, which looks an awful lot like oatmeal. And it'll use flaked corn as well. That kind of stuff does not need to be milled. And I'll explain that, but basically after you mill your grain, then you can pour in that kind of stuff and mix it in with the grain. So, next question is, how does the grain work? Like, how does this become beer? It's really important to know that process so that when you are making your beer, you understand what's happening. It will help you have a better process and have better beer and get the desired result. So, 
Grain is just like any other sort of seed. It's got a kernel inside. And if you water it, it will sprout a plant. So when it sprouts, that little plant, that little seedling, needs food right away. So inside these little grains is carbohydrates, a little bit, just enough to give a sort of an energy boost to this little seedling that's trying to grow. That is where we're going to get our sugar that we're going to convert to alcohol for our beer. But you get your grain in whole kernels like this, right? That's how it comes. So if you just put this in the water, it's not going to do anything because it's too hard. It's a very hard outer uh, shell and you're not going to be able to penetrate it just by soaking it in water. So you have to somehow get in there. So the first thing is most grain is malted. What that means is that a maltster will take the grain, sprinkle it with water, get it damp, and then allow it to just barely start to sprout. So as the plant inside of it cracks open the grain and starts to try to come out, they immediately dry the grain. They put it under heat. Um, they could smoke it. There's lots of ways to do it. That's what these maltsters are really so good at. That's their job. But the point is that you you let the plant open and crack the kernel and then you immediately dry it. That gives you access to all the good stuff that that plant had needed to grow, all that energy. So that's what malting is. So if you ever wonder, malt simply is the process of allowing the grain to sprout. In this case, we need to crack open this grain so we can get to the stuff inside that's going to convert to sugars. So the deal is we don't want to mill it or, you know, crack it to the point where you have a super fine flour. If you were to put something like flour into a bucket of water, it's going to turn into dough and it's going to be impossible to get the water to flow through it and convert it to sugars. It would, it just wouldn't work. And it would be a big mess. Can you imagine? So we want to crack or mill the grain, but we don't want to do it too fine. So the age old question is how fine or how coarse do you mill your grain? Well, a lot of that has to do with personal preference and the type of equipment you use. I live in a very small house and I have very limited space. So you will see, as my videos will show, I have a very small amount of equipment that I use because I don't have a lot of place to store it. Uh, <clears throat> but you have a couple of options. So if you're new to homebrewing, you can uh, just have it uh, milled at your homebrew store. Uh, the pros are that you don't need your own mill and it doesn't take up more space at home. Uh, the negative side of it is that you can't control how coarse or fine your grain is going to be because the homebrew store doesn't want you messing with the settings on their mill. They have a lot of people coming in and milling their grain. So they can't have every person adjusting it to what they think they need. It's just going to be a nightmare. So the homebrew store will set the mill to whatever they think is going to be a more universal setting that will hopefully fit most people's needs. And that's what you get. So the downside of that is if it is too coarse or too fine, it's going to affect something called your efficiency, meaning how much sugar can you convert from the grain. Um, and part of what determines that is how fine or coarse you grind your grain.
The other part of it is your equipment. For example, I use something called a brew in the bag system. And so I can afford to do a slightly more fine mill on my grain because it isn't going to be as easy for it to get stuck. So how do I explain what that is? If you're new to brewing, what is a stuck, a stuck mash? So as I was saying earlier, you want the water in your pot to be able to circulate around the grains so that it can convert the stuff that comes out of the inside into sugar. But if you have a grind, you know, a mill that's too fine, it's going to be hard for that water to sort of circulate through because it's going to all, it's all stored of sort of going to start gumming up kind of like, you know, if you were to put flour in there, not quite as bad, but it can get to the point where water just cannot easily sort of sift through it. And now you've gotten to the point where we would call the stuck sparge, where you can't get the water to circulate through it. That's a problem. You're not going to get very good, um, a very good efficiency or a conversion of sugar uh, doing that. So there are ways to fix it. One of the options is if you do happen to mill your grain and it's too fine, you can add rice holes. You should be able to buy rice holes at your homebrew store. You can order them online. They're not all that expensive. They're literally just the outer shell of rice that you probably have never seen because when you buy rice in the store, it's already taken off. But you can buy these and you just throw a handful or two in with your grain. And what it does is it just adds space between your kernels of grain, which allows the water to more easily flow through your grain. Uh, so that's, that's a nice little trick. Um, I've never used rice holes, um, but I can definitely see how they'd be helpful, especially if you don't use a brew in the bag. If you're not familiar, a brew in the bag literally is a mesh bag that you put your grain in, it's sort of like a giant tea bag. So literally you can pick the whole thing up if you need to and sort of give it a jiggle and then put it back down. It's harder for the grain to get stuck as it is uh, with a brew in the bag system, which is why you can have a slightly finer mill on your grain and that results in a little better efficiency sometimes, meaning you get a little better sugar uh, return by doing that. But uh, if you don't, you would normally do a slightly coarser grind depending you know, what kind of equipment. If you're using uh, a three-tier system where you have a, a basically a cooler that you've converted and that's where you're letting your mash sit for the hour, you might need to put in rice holes or use a slightly coarser grind. So it really depends on your setup uh, what, what you need to do. And it takes a little bit of experimentation. Sometimes it takes, you know, a couple tries to get dial in what you want. So that's one option. If you have your own grill, uh, grill, if you, if you have your own mill, if you have your own mill, you can adjust it and basically decide for yourself how fine a course you want. And now you don't have to worry about the brew store having it too coarse for you or too fine for you and then being stuck with whatever they give you. So you can do it yourself. Also the benefit is you can keep your grain unmilled for as long as you want. And then when you're ready, you know, the day you're gonna brew, you can grind and mill your, your grain and you're all set. It's it's the freshest possible it could be. Uh, I will give you a little tip or warning. This probably doesn't affect everybody, but for people like myself who have rather sensitive lungs, you might want to consider wearing a mask when you mill your grain. It is super dusty. 
And if you've ever seen or know anything about giant mills where they store their grain in these giant silos, you know that uh, they always have to wear respirators because that is how fine and really crazy the dust is. So you'll know right away because if you start milling your grain and you start feeling kind of a wheezy or tightness in your chest, stop you know go out of that area it'll get it'll be okay it should recover fine but um consider wearing a mask that's what i do and then i just uh, let it sit for a moment before i take the mask off um so we've talked about mill milling your grain at home uh, and i'm going to show you that process uh, and i'll move the camera so you can better see the whole uh, exciting process there is one third option that I talked about when I first started this video, which was getting your grain pre-milled. So you can buy grain online that's already been milled for you. Um, I really recommend you don't do that. Mo mostly because you don't know how long that grain has been sitting there like that. Um, if you are familiar with Amazon a lot of people sell items on Amazon by mailing their stuff into an Amazon warehouse and then it will sit in that warehouse until someone buys it so it could be six months eight months a year that that milled grain is just sitting in a warehouse in Amazon and then you buy it and you've bought this grain that's already been milled but it was milled maybe a year ago and it's just been sitting on the shelf that whole time so i just don't like that idea that you just don't know when that grain was milled and how long it's been sitting there if you buy your grain from an actual brewing source like northern brewer or uh, more beer or some site like that and you buy it milled you're probably pretty safe uh, I believe that they mill the grain for you per order. Uh, and you kind of know this because they charge you differently. And that's the other side of this. If you have your grain milled at a brew store locally, or even if you buy it online and you have them mill it for you and then send it, you pay extra. There's a surcharge. So you will save money. Uh, over the long term if you buy your grain whole and then mill it yourself that being said the mill is not that inexpensive so you know you're probably not going to buy a mill like i have here unless you are really into home brewing and you know you're going to be doing it for quite some time uh, it will save you money it will pay for itself but only if you're going to be using it for for a significant amount of time so if you're new to brewing i would suggest stick to homebrew stores or getting your grain online and having it milled and sent to you or milled in the store uh, and then you know if you really get to enjoying the hobby and you're happy with the product that you're producing uh, maybe you want to consider buying a mill so you can save yourself some money, uh, get a little bit fresher grain and mill it right before you uh, use it to make your beer. All right, I'm going to switch the stuff up a little bit here and move the camera so that you can see me milling the actual grain. Uh, so I will be with you in just a moment. Well, hi everybody. So I am not sure whether I have filmed everything or not. Apparently, instead of having the camera running, I had the, or instead of having the video running, I had the camera. I just put the grain in here. I'm hoping I got uh, on video the details of that but basically if I didn't I took it from the bucket which I already measured my grain in and I just poured some in uh, I already actually milled this if I didn't get it on video but it didn't mill to my satisfaction there was too many large grains in it so I'm gonna do it again
one more bucket, and then uh, I'll give you a, a better view of what the grain looked like. If I didn't catch it before, you can kind of see if I can get it on film here, uh, what it looks like. It's just the whole grains. Actually, this got milled a little bit already. Uh, it just didn't grind it as well as I wanted it to, as fine a grind. So I put it back in the bucket. Pretty cool. All right, here we go. Let's finish her off. All right, so let me show you if I can. I don't know if you can see very well, but uh, it is a much finer, you know, milling. You can actually see the flour on my hand a little bit, like on my palm, uh, that gets produced. That's what gets into the air, and that's what you end up breathing in if you don't have a mask on. So, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it. Learn something. I'll have lots more videos. I'm going to try to do one a week. And then I'll do a full brew day video. As a reminder, I'll have all of the equipment that I use and all the grain that I used in the description with links. And um, if you like the video, you want to see when the next one comes out, hit subscribe, hit the little bell icon on your YouTube, and you should get notified when I put out the next video. So until next time, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Happy brewing.